So you've heard of ayahuasca, but have you heard of psilawaska? Today, I'm diving into a lesser known psychedelic combination, psilawaska. It's a powerful blend of psilocybin mushrooms and MAO inhibiting harmala alkaloids. It's gaining traction for its uniquely introspective, extended journey and potential neurobiological benefits. Little disclaimer, this content is separate from my future role in naturopathic medicine, and we never recommend the use of illegal substances on this channel. The Trip Time Essentials YouTube channel does not contain medical advice. Always consult a physician regarding medical decisions. All content on this channel is strictly presented for educational, informative, and entertainment purposes only, which is suitable for advertising according to YouTube guidelines. So, what exactly is psilawaska? It's not a different mushroom species. It's a combination of two main substances, inspired by ayahuasca. While ayahuasca combines DMT with a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, usually a Banisteriopsis capi vine, or sometimes Syrian rue seeds, or Paganum harmala, psilawaska involves combining psilocybin mushrooms with those same harmala alkaloids used in ayahuasca, such as harmine, harmaline, and tetrahydroharmine. Most often, People use extracted alkaloids from Syrian rue, but it's also common to utilize the entire ground-up Syrian rue seed or b capi vine. What's the goal of this combination? Normally, the body breaks down psilocin very quickly, limiting the peak and duration of the trip. But harmala alkaloids inhibit MAOA, an enzyme responsible for breaking down monoamines and tryptamines like serotonin, psilocin, and DMT, and also things like dopamine and norepinephrine. When MAOA is inhibited, more psilocin reaches the brain and sticks around for longer. This enhances and prolongs the trip, often making it more introspective and emotionally charged. It is also much more potent, requiring lower dosages of mushrooms. Interestingly, harmala alkaloids also tend to be calming and mood boosting, sometimes helping the mushroom experience to be more manageable and calm psychologically. Let's zoom in on harmine, one of the key alkaloids in this combination. Harmine isn't just a reversible MAOA inhibitor. It also has a fascinating range of effects that makes psilocybin more than just a longer mushroom trip. First, neurogenesis. Harmine has been shown to promote the growth of new neurons. One study published in Frontiers in Pharmacology found that harmine increased BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, supporting brain plasticity. We also see DYRK1A inhibition. Harmine inhibits an enzyme called DYRK1A which is involved in the regulation of neurodevelopment, and inhibition of this enzyme has shown promise in conditions like autism and Alzheimer's. Pancreatic and metabolic support. Inhibition of DYRK1A also has benefits in metabolic health. Animal studies, as well as studies using human pancreatic cells, have shown that harmine can stimulate proliferation of pancreatic beta cells which could have future relevance for diabetes treatment. And then mood modulation. Through the serotonergic, dopaminergic, and antioxidant pathways, harmine may offer mood lifting and anxiolytic or stress relieving properties, even outside of the psychedelic experiences. The bottom line, harmine adds to the neurogenesis already seen with psilocybin, which in theory should allow the positive benefits to last even longer post-trip. People who've tried psilocybin often describe the experience as more immersive, warmer of an experience, emotionally intense and cathartic, releasing, dreamlike with vivid visual symbolism, and longer lasting. This is a big one, even up to 10 plus hours, according to some user reports. Some users even report a deeper sense of communion with self or nature, similar to ayahuasca, but with a distinctly psilocybin flavor. The experience can still come on quickly, but can also be slow building and can feel more spiritual, deeply reflective, and more profound in many ways. In terms of dosage amounts, 
it's critical to take a far smaller dose of mushrooms than you normally would. There are reports of strong experiences even with just half a gram of mushrooms. For reference, people often take three, five, even more grams of mushrooms, although that is quite strong on it in and of itself. The amount of harmala alkaloids to take varies a bit too. Extracted harmala blends are typically a mix of harmine and harmaline at around a 1 to 1 or 2 to 1 ratio. 150 to 200 milligrams of the harmala blend taken orally 10 minutes before the mushroom dose is typical, but sublingual administration, which is holding under the tongue for 10 to 15 minutes, of a little bit less, 125 to 175 milligrams of the harmala alkaloids, is preferred by some users to avoid stomach discomfort. And then tetrahydroharmine is optional as it's not a relevant MAO inhibitor and usually is purchased individually, but some users find it to add a nice mood boosting element due to its mild SSRI activity. And the dose for additional tetrahydroharmine is about 100 milligrams. If you are using ground Syrian rue seeds, the dosage is three to five grams orally. Be aware, the nausea is more likely with the seeds rather than the extracted alkaloid material. So all this being said, combining MAO inhibitors with psychedelics isn't something to do casually. Harmala alkaloids can interact with many substances, including SSRIs and stimulants. Fortunately, harmala alkaloids are reversible inhibitors of the enzyme, meaning there's much less worry with dietary tyramine. But to be extra cautious, avoid foods high in tyramine, like aged cheeses and cured meats. So the key precautions, avoid serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine enhancing medications, like SSRIs, SNRIs, amphetamines, other stimulants, and things like MDMA. Also, avoid supplements like mucuna prurians, 5-HTP, and phenylethylamine. And then be mindful of set and setting. Silawaska is not a party combination. It's very strong. It's best suited for introspective or ceremonial use, ideally with support from a trip sitter. Silawaska is a powerful tool, but one that deserves respect, preparation, and integration. The combination of harmine's neurogenesis and metabolic benefits with psilocybin's therapeutic potential makes it a really fascinating and underexplored territory. As always, education and safety come first. If you found this breakdown helpful, please give us a like, subscribe for more psychedelic science, and leave a comment if you've tried or are curious about psilocybin. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Until next time, elevate your trip.